I'm Jared. I'm one of the founders of Scribd, and today I am really excited to finally get to talk about something that we've been working on in secret for a long time. I couldn't think of a better venue to launch this at, because what we're doing plays directly into a debate over Flash and HTML that has been raging at this expo. I'm sure that you've all been following this. The short story is that after three years of building on Flash, Scribd is starting over and moving everything to HTML5. I think that this is the largest deployment of HTML5 to date, and I know it's a bet the company decision for us. This presentation is the story of that decision, and I hope that it is useful to you as a case study for building your own HTML5 apps. Scribd is the largest social publishing and reading site with over 50 million monthly unique visitors. Lots of content has been shared on Scribd, and people come mainly to read that content. Today, they read it using our Flash document reader. It looks like this. Now, incidentally, Flash is a terrific technology, and it's very useful in a lot of situations. But for Scribd, for reading documents, it's always had a few drawbacks. They boil down to the fact that you are putting the content inside a separate application. This leads to a browser and a browser problem where we end up duplicating the built-in functionality of the user's browser ourselves. This is one, a lot of work, and two, almost inevitably a bad user experience. So one night we were sitting around and we went back to first principles. And we asked ourselves, why do you need a special reading application just to view a document? After all, people are reading more and more in browsers. You read blogs in your browser. You read the New York Times in your browser. Browsers are meant for reading. So why should documents be different? Well, it turns out that the biggest challenge is formatting. See, documents routinely use very complex formatting. Vector graphics, rotated text, precise positioning that is difficult to replicate in a web page. Until recently, browsers only supported a dozen fonts. Fonts are actually critical. Without the right fonts, you can't reproduce the appearance of a document correctly. At least not without converting the text into an image. This is an approach that some products have taken, so I want to address it. What they do is they take the text of the document, they turn it into an image of that text. This solves the formatting problem. But the reality is that images break the web just as much as special plugins do. Imagine that tomorrow morning you wake up and overnight an evil gnome has gone through the web and converted all the text into images of that text. This would suck. Search engines would break. Browser search would break. Zooming would break. Text selection and copying and pasting would break. Deaf people couldn't listen to the content. Mobile devices couldn't reflow it. And ad networks couldn't understand it. Everything would be broken. Text is like the glue that holds the web together. You can't just live without it. And now you don't have to. Over the past few months, Every major browser has rolled out support for custom fonts through the font base element and vector graphics through either Canvas or VML. Today, browser support for these features stands at 97%. Yes, we can support 97% of browsers in the wild, including IE6. This means that browsers are now finally powerful enough to display any document natively. Or at least that was the theory. When we first started working on this project six months ago, no one knew whether it was really possible in practice. We had to extract over a billion fonts across tens of millions of documents and get them all to render exactly the same way in every web browser. Web fonts are new technology. No one had pushed them that far. 
At the same time, we were preparing to abandon a three-year, multi-million dollar investment in Flash for an unproven idea. Honestly, it was not an easy decision. And I think this will be a common theme of HTML5 projects, that is, with, with any real innovation, there is an element of risk. In Scripps' case, though, it worked out great. And it works just as well on mobile devices. See, that's the beauty of HTML. It's the lowest common denominator format, so everything supports it. Every mobile phone, tablet, e-reader, they all support HTML. And increasingly, they support HTML5. So Scribd got access to this entire mobile market. And we did it without having to write a separate app for every mobile platform. Let's see this in action. This is a magazine with rich formatting, so it really shows off what we can do. The first thing that you'll notice is that this is an ordinary web, web page. The content is no longer in a box, so I scroll it as normal. We built this bar down here at the bottom to make it easier to navigate through long documents, but actually, it's not necessary. Everything in this bar you can do using your browser's built-in functions as well. It is helpful, though, if you want to jump to a particular page. Like here, I know I want to jump to page 18. Now, check this out. I'm going to highlight some text, and I'm going to copy the text, and I'm going to paste it into my browser's search function. And you can see that this all actually works because everything here is ordinary text. Now, let's look at a presentation. This was originally a PowerPoint, but now it's being displayed in HTML5. HTML is a great experience for reading presentations online. It's, it's so natural. If I want, I can flip the PowerPoint into slideshow mode, where it displays like as if I were presenting it. Or if I just want to read it on my computer, I can move it back to scroll mode. And because this is all online in a web browser, I have access to all the social functionality I expect to find on the web. Like right now, I'm going to readcast this presentation or share it with all my friends on Facebook. Done. Now let's look at this on the, on the iPad. This is a document rendered in pure HTML5 on the iPad. You can see that the text and graphics came out just beautiful. Because this is online, all I need to do is pan right a little bit, and I get access to all of Scribd's social functionality right there. So easy. When we started Scribd three years ago, we had a simple vision. We wanted to make it really easy for people to publish whatever they had written on the web. I would say that until now, until HTML5, we had not fully achieved that vision. It just wasn't possible. So that's the story of how open web standards made it possible for Scribd to achieve our vision. I hope they can help you achieve yours, too. Thanks.